Opioid epidemic is pretty bad in the city of Dearborn, also all over the state of Michigan. Opioid related deaths here in Michigan are soaring. The counties with the highest reported number of deaths are Wayne County. So I was shocked to realize that the opioid epidemic had reached the Muslim community. This is a new crisis. In the Muslim community, people were trying to treat addiction at home. My parents were denying that I had a drug problem. It was obvious that I was doing something wrong. Unfortunately, within our community, the failure of the child is automatically taken as failure of the family. Drug addiction has destroyed my family. Here, every parent's in denial, like the amount of ODs that's been going on since 2016. We just got a spike in calls for narcotic overdoses, mainly in the Muslim community. We might have a family tell us it might be a diabetic issue, when 100% it's a drug overdose. These are the last two I will ever allow to put in my body ever again. The biggest anger with the issue was people pretending it wasn't an issue at all. There are many Muslims that never seek help and then ultimately end up dying because of the shame and the guilt. My name is Rabi Darwish. I'm a grateful recovering addict. I also am a part of the Safe Substance Abuse Coalition. I receive about two to 10 phone calls a day. It was very surprising to me to find out that I wasn't alone in the Muslim community struggling with drug addiction because the Muslim community did a really good job of hiding it. The opioid epidemic affected Dearborn greatly. Crime rate went up. Uh, the death rate went up. The guilt and the stigma has delayed a lot of people coming out to seek help. And that's uh, very dangerous. My name is Arash. I'm 27 years old. I'm currently recovering from heroin and crystal meth. I started using when I was 15 years old. When I was using, I didn't have anxiety. I finally realized that I was doing something wrong when I saw myself in the mirror with track marks on my arms. My parents were denying that I had a drug problem because it was embarrassing to the family and it was a, uh, you know, bad look. My family viewed addiction as the devil, and it is the devil, but it's a sickness at the same time. You know, I was sick. My parents sent me to Iran because they felt like they had no more options. I was in a rehab facility there where they don't give you very much food. They beat people a lot. They don't give you medications. It was like a jail. I was very traumatized by that experience and I did not stay clean afterwards. It happens a lot in the community that they send their children to the home country. It usually doesn't work. Last year was a terrible year. We lost about eight or nine from this community alone. Islam prohibits any intoxication. What led me to realize that we have a crisis was suddenly these families coming in and bringing a son or a daughter in a totally disoriented state and expecting me to recite a prayer and fix things. With Middle Eastern culture, the Imam is the one that they expect to deal with all the crises. The church or the synagogue has a number of peripheral institutions that work with it. The shame is something that comes from the culture that religion plays a role in. Your daughters want to get married, nobody would come forward. They want to get a job, probably it has ramifications as far as their job. In some cases, families had to literally move the city and go somewhere else and start fresh because of one child becoming an addict. 
For many years, we were somehow excluded from it. If the occasion society took them 20 years to, to get to this, we are starting a little bit late. The safe house is a three-quarter house that's sober living. The only way to get into the house is by coming from a, a treatment center. Right now, we have about seven living in the house. Five of the seven are Muslim. Usually, the Muslims that are entering treatment are basically at the end of the road. When Arash came to us, he was going through withdrawal. So you don't gotta wake up. <laughs> you really couldn't say much to him. He would uh, have one word responses. We had our work cut out for us. And I remember speaking to Arash and I said, look, man, uh, you're gonna die if, if you don't really get this help. This young man really surrendered and he did exactly what we asked of him. It's truly a walking miracle. Chrissy, it's Rabi Darwish. How are you? I need some help. How soon is he going to want to come in? I do have a little bit of a wait. We're kind of full. Okay. But okay. Uh, as soon as possible, please. Okay. What's he using? Um, it's uh, opiates. Call me in the morning and we'll see what we got for uh, Hassan, okay? All right. Thank you. Basically, I was just trying to help uh, Hassan get into uh, treatment as quickly as possible. The longer we wait, the less likely he might go to treatment. They said that you're gonna have to wait at least 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. You think you can hold off till then? I've been ready for a while. So many things held me back when I should have never let it held me back, but there's no excuses anymore. Is your family being supportive in this decision? Not one bit. Really? Yep, not one bit. Okay. Well, you're gonna have my support, that's for sure. There's meetings here five days a week. So, we have your back. Yeah, it's gonna be all right. All right, guys, notebooks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning. Morning. Okay, thank you everyone uh, for coming today. And thank you for having the willingness and courage to uh, do this meeting. I am grateful that today we, we can get together as uh, Muslims because about 10 years ago when I attempted to come into recovery, it felt very lonely. I was addicted for so long and my family didn't even want to reach out to help. And around the whole Arabic community, everybody shamed me. How do you get out of that? Addiction overall is tough on any human being. I really believe in our culture, it's so much harder. They need to stop being ashamed and just come out and say, Khalas, my son needs, my daughter needs help. So hopefully we'll get there. I'm very blessed to go to Hajj this year, okay? This is my third time going to Hajj and Arash is gonna be coming. Okay. Congratulations, man. In our program, if you have a year or more, we have a very generous community of people that go to Hajj and that sponsor others that go to Hajj. Hajj is a pilgrimage. It's one of the pillars of Islam. We visit the city of Mecca, which is the holiest site in all of Islam. For someone in recovery to go to Hajj, it's very powerful because it symbolizes a sense of hope. It kind of, I feel, solidifies one's recovery. So about six months of clean time for him. Rash, I told him that we go to Hajj. And when I said that to him, his eyes lit up. Rash's faith is very, very important to him. You, you know what? You earned it, man. You, you, you earned it, you know? So I'm, I'm very proud of you, man. You understand? You come along, right? See, I think it's on the full grace of God that I'm sober right now and I'm, you know, getting my life back together because I was probably gonna die. Three years ago, Ali Sadi and I did an intervention for Haas's brother. And uh, that was our first intervention. And so now we're helping out Haas. I think he's ready to go. I'm on the way to recovery, and today we'll be starting my day one. It's a 21-day program. Before I left my house today, I actually said goodbye to my sister. She cried and hugged me. I love her to death. I said goodbye to my mom and dad and I told them how much I love them, and I told them how much I appreciate everything they've ever done for me. I'm gonna get through it. It happened to me. I'm not proud of it. There could be an end. This could stop. Our community is afraid 
to say something. I'm uh, at the skate park. You're leaving in two days, right? Yeah. Wow, I am very excited for you. Thank you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> you take care of yourself, okay? Okay. I pray for you. All right. Be safe, listen listen to Hajrabi and Ajlatife, you know? Yeah. What was it called? Thank you to Satam. I love you so much. Yeah, I love you too. Bye bye. I love you. Bye bye. When I found out that that was a possibility to go to Hajj, I was really committed to staying clean. We're going to Detroit Metropolitan Airport for uh, my flight to Lebanon, then to Mecca. We're gonna miss you, Rosh. <laughs> you're, you're like our mascot at the house. Thank you. Alright, All right. Let's do it all day. Bring me back something cool. Alright, I got you. I never imagined I would be free from addiction. This trip is important to me because it's part of a, a new beginning, a new life, a new chapter. I've chosen to share my story and be seen because I want people to get help and not be afraid and not be embarrassed. We can't eat this back home because it's not halal. Thank Boom. You so oh, you're welcome, brother. Oh, oh. Halal. <laughs> <laughs>